So it says for the circuit below, it's uh, giving all the parameter values. So I guess I need to be plugging in numbers later. Uh, so it's giving me the voltage, resistance, and inductance. Oh, and I guess two registers are, have the same value. And it's describing how um, the circuit uh, configuration is changing. So it's uh, first uh, trying to reach a steady state with this switch closed and this switch open. And then at t equals zero, this switch is closed and this is open. All right. Um, yeah, uh, so, okay. So it says determine the current through L at t equals zero. Oh, I guess, so the question is trying to walk us through um, through each step in the order that we would need to go. So uh, basically what you're doing with the circuit on the left, and side of the circuit <laughs> is you are charging up the inductor. And after you are done charging up the inductor is where you are starting here. So I, I should first figure out the steady state current through the inductor. So the number one thing to know about the inductor, again, is the voltage drop across the inductor, which is that it's given by inductance times the rate of change of current. And this means for steady state, this is going to zero. So this voltage difference is going to zero. So the steady state current is simply given by the current through this register and um, or one that would be given by Ohm's law. Current is the, uh, the applied voltage, the better voltage divided by the register. And the, the voltage drop here is zero, so it, uh, not, it's not doing anything. And this value here, uh, when you plug in the numbers, is what you should plug in for the initial current through the inductor. And for the rest of the question, I think, yeah. For the rest of the question, it's uh, basically asking you about a discharging LR circuit. And I would say that's probably the simplest possible time-dependent circuit. Well, not simplest possible in the conceptual sense because inductors, you know, involves magnetism, Faraday's law, but simplest possible in the mathematical sense um, because the equation you need to write down is uh, one single equation and it's something you can solve fairly quickly using separation of variables technique. So let me uh, start out with um, the initial state for this circuit as it begins to discharge. So I have a current, I naught, flowing through the circuit, flowing through the register. And at this junction, it all has to go uh, this way. It can't go, um, well, this switch is gonna get opened, so it can't go here. So this is my I naught. And um, so this current goes here, it goes through the register and it comes back completes a loop. So, when you see a circuit like that and you are doing general uh, problem solving approach, use a, you use a Kirchhoff's rules. Um, so here I have a one simple loop. So I'm going to be using Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule and just uh, uh, go through that. So uh, Kirchhoff's, uh, Kirch I don't know, I, I'm always gonna Butcher that name. I've tried a bunch of different things and I just can't pronounce it right. Uh, so <laughs> let me just write it. <laughs> the uh, Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule says, when I add up all the voltage changes going around the loop, that should, that should add up to zero. So I'm going to start here and imagine going around the loop this way and I'm completing the loop this way. So as I go across an inductor, there should be a change in voltage that's associated with this. So there should be, um, for now, let me not decide on the sign yet. It's gonna be plus or minus, one or the other, <laughs> L di dt. And as I go across the register, let me define the direction of current in such a way that, um, or, not the, well, I'm gonna, this is how I'm labeling the direction of current. So it's gonna work out so that uh, I'm, as I go across the register in the same direction as current, I need to drop voltage of IR. 
and a loop rule says when you uh, complete the loop, that should uh, equal zero. So here I didn't decide on the sign plus or minus yet because I really need to think this through to make sure that it has correct sign. So I want to make it so that my initial current is positive. So this IR, that's a positive quantity, uh, which means I'm subtracting a positive. So this uh, entire term needs to be positive at t equal zero in order for this whole thing to add up or, you know, dip, dip, whatever, come out to zero, <laughs> add up or subtract to zero. So I needed this entire term to be zero. Inductance is positive. Now this DIDT is what I need to be careful. I hope you have enough of a physical intuition that if you are starting out with some initial current, that it's gonna decay over time. It's discharging. So this DIDT, it's a negative quantity. It's decaying. So if I want the entire term to be positive, then I really needed to say minus LDIDT. Um, is the first term. So that at t equals zero, my first term here is positive. So, so that's what I'm writing down. And you know, if you didn't go through this and mistakenly wrote positive there, at some point you will see something that indicates you made a sign error. And when you say you fix it. Um, sign errors are one of the most common errors. Uh, when you recognize that you made it, you fix it. So, so okay, this is my equation. Let me, um, write it down in the standard form, which is I solve it for the highest order derivative. di dt is equal to, move this over here. So I have plus uh, r times i, plus r times i, and then divided by minus l. Oh, so it becomes minus r over l, uh, minus r over l. So, um, so this is a differential equation. And I guess this might actually be simple enough that you can guess an answer to it. Um, um, yeah, you know what? Let me just guess a convenient answer and hit on there. I, so the proper way to do, solve this is using separation of variables. That's done in the lecture. And uh, I encourage you to look at the lecture to see how you do it properly. I'll do it improperly here, which is I know this, that I'm taking derivative of a function that depends on time. This, you know, is potential, it should be a function of time. And when I take the derivative, I notice that I get the same function back, except for this coefficient here. So what this tells me is that I of t, it's gonna be some kind of an exponential function. And this coefficient here, I assume that must be coming from chain rule. So my um, function should be exponential of, and the what's inside here is when I take the derivative will give me minus R over L. So it should be minus R over L times T. Um, that way when I take the derivative of the outside, the outside remains the same, gives me I, and the inside gives me a minus r over l. So, so let me write that, this down in a more proper format. So um, this proportionality is not good enough. I actually need to make it on equality. And to make it on equality, I say, oh, there's uh, the initial uh, current that's gonna give me the, the, the coefficient here. And I verify it by plugging in t equals zero. And when I plug in, in t equals zero, exponential of zero is one. So yeah, at t equals zero, my current is i naught, and the rest should fall into place. So the current as a function of time is i naught exponential of, and I'm gonna write this in a slightly different way, which is minus t over l over r. And I have a reason for uh, wanting to write this in this uh, nested fraction. And that's because this is what's sometimes called, um, um, what is it called? I mean, it's one of the time constant. Um, so let me just leave it there. It's called a time constant. And it's a time constant that applies to the LR circuit. The inductance divided by resistance, it'll give you something that has a unit of time and 
um, it's uh, uh, useful for characterizing behavior of the circuit. So yeah, the rest of the, this question, well, part B definitely is just uh, plugging in the numbers because it's asking for the current. I have expression for the current. I know I not, I know L and R. So all I have to do is simply plug in. I at T equals 5.5 times 10 to minus four. And, uh, you know, watch the prefixes and uh, make sure your final answer is not here. <laughs> and that's it. And uh, it's asking for voltage across R. For that, I would use the, the Ohm's law. So I already know the current, or I have an answer that I put into B. Then at that same time, the voltage change across R should be Ohm's law, the current times the resistance. So you have your answer to B. Multiply that um, with resistance, that should give you the answer here. Again, what's the unit? Um, make sure you don't have any uh, power of 10 mistake that's associated with the prefixes here. And D, um, there's actually two different ways to D. Um, one is to, you know, take this uh, expression and take the uh, take the derivative here. Uh, that, that's the kind of, I guess that's the um, boring way. The more interesting way is to notice that this voltage difference across the inductor, that's the same voltage difference across the register in terms of the magnitudes. So you can say, all right, L times di dt is equal to I times R. And I hope you notice this derivative here, which is what we are looking for. So you simply solve for it, the derivative is uh, in terms of the magnitudes um, is equal to R over L times I. So you have the value of the current from part to B. And if you just multiply by R over L, that should give you the value of, uh, that should give you the rate of current change um, across L. So that's the less boring way to do part B. So, so this is um, kind of, giving you some sense of working with a, an inductor register circuit. And this is probably the simplest possible non-trivial time bearing circuit. And uh, it's also possible to ask questions about the charging portion of the circuit. Uh, that, that oh, okay, charging portion is the next, uh, um, well, you know, second easiest <laughs> question that you can ask that's not uh, trivial. And uh, the discharging portion is the simplest possible circumstance that's, uh, you know, not trivial easy. <laughs>